Welcome back to the Oddities Iceberg. In this third episode, we're diving deeper into the intriguing array of earthly peculiarities on the third section of the chart. Get ready to explore the enigmatic Beale papers, uncover the haunting story of the Frog Boys, delve into the controversial monkey hate phenomenon, revisit the historical enigma of the Battle of Los Angeles, and even more. Alongside these captivating topics, we'll also touch on many more lesser-known mysteries and bizarre events. 52 Hertz Whale The 52 Hertz Whale, often referred to as the world's loneliest whale, emits a call at a frequency of 52 Hertz, which is significantly higher than the typical 15 to 25 Hertz range of most other whale species, like the blue or fin whales. First detected in 1989 by the U.S. Navy, this unique frequency has made it difficult for the whale to communicate with others of its kind, leading to its moniker as the loneliest whale. Its species remains unidentified, and it may possibly be a hybrid or even the last of its kind, navigating a solitary path through the Pacific Ocean. This whale's unusual call and the mystery surrounding its existence have captivated researchers and the public alike, inspiring various cultural references and a significant amount of scientific interest. Albert Stevens Albert Stevens, also known as Patient CAL-1, was an ordinary house painter from Ohio who became the subject of one of the most radioactive human radiation experiments ever conducted. In 1945, he was unknowingly injected with a significant amount of plutonium by Dr. Joseph Gilbert Hamilton as part of an experiment under the auspices of the Manhattan Project. The doctors involved mistakenly believed Stevens was dying from cancer, which justified their use of his body to study plutonium retention. This injection made Stevens the most radioactive human ever recorded. Remarkably, Stevens did not have cancer. He had a benign gastric ulcer, a fact discovered only after the plutonium was injected. His case remains one of the most egregious examples of unethical medical experimentation in U.S. history. Alexandria's Genesis Alexandria's Genesis is a fictional condition that originated from internet lore, first appearing in a piece of fan fiction written in 1998 based on the animated series Daria. It describes a supposed genetic mutation that gives individuals purple eyes and a variety of other extraordinary traits such as perfect vision, no body hair except for on the head, immunity to most diseases, and a lifespan of 130 to 170 years. Over time, the story has evolved to include even more fantastical elements like flawless skin and a complete absence of bodily waste. Despite its widespread discussion online, Alexandria's genesis is not recognized by medical science, it is a creation of fiction, thoroughly debunked by experts and fact-checking websites. The tale continues to circulate due to its intriguing narrative of superhuman features, illustrating how digital myths can gain traction on the internet. Anatoly Bogorsky Anatoly Bogorsky, a Russian physicist, experienced a rare and extreme radiation accident in 1978 when he accidentally placed his head in the path of the proton beam of the U-70 synchrotron at the Institute for High Energy Physics in Protvino, Russia. This beam, moving at nearly the speed of light, passed directly through his head, entering at the back and exiting through his nose. Remarkably, despite receiving an extremely high dose of radiation, estimated between 200,000 to 300,000 rads, which is hundreds of times the lethal dose, Bogorsky survived. He suffered severe injuries including a paralyzed left side of his face, which did not age, and a loss of hearing in his left ear. Additionally, he experienced frequent seizures but maintained his intellectual capabilities, completing his PhD and continuing his work as a physicist. Animal Rain Animal Rain is an unusual meteorological phenomenon where small animals such as fish, frogs, or even spiders are swept up by water spouts or updrafts and fall from the sky along with raindrops. Most commonly associated with strong weather patterns, such as tornadoes or severe storms, these water spouts can lift animals from water bodies, carrying them over large distances. When the water spout loses energy and the water and animals fall back to the ground, it appears as though it is raining animals. This phenomenon has been reported in various parts of the world, including small towns in Honduras, where fish rain is an annual event, and in places like Kerala, India, and Yoro, Honduras, which have experienced similar occurrences. Artesela. Artesela is an outdoor art exhibition located in the Sella Valley, in the region of Trentino, Italy. It was founded in 1986 and has since become a renowned venue for contemporary art that harmoniously integrates with the natural landscape. This unique artistic endeavor showcases works made from natural materials like wood, stone, and leaves, 
created by over 200 artists from around the world. The installations are designed to interact with the environment, changing and decaying over time, thus reflecting the transient nature of life and art. Artesela features two main paths, the Arte Natura route and the Malga Costa path, which guide visitors through various artworks dispersed among the forest and meadows, providing an immersive natural and cultural experience. Atacama Skeleton The Atacama Skeleton, often referred to as Ada, is a small mummified set of remains found in 2003 in Chile's Atacama Desert. Initially, its strange features such as a conical skull and underdeveloped ribcage led to wild speculation about extraterrestrial origins. However, scientific analysis has confirmed that Ada is human. DNA testing revealed that the skeleton was that of a female fetus who suffered from genetic mutations affecting bone development, contributing to its unusual physical characteristics. These mutations were linked to conditions like dwarfism and scoliosis, explaining the skeleton's small size and irregular shape. Ada is thought to have been a preterm birth and possibly stillborn or dying shortly after birth. Genetic studies also indicated that Ada had a mix of Native American and European ancestry, typical of the local population in the region where she was found. Atlanta Nights Atlanta Nights is a deliberately poor quality novel created by a group of science fiction and fantasy authors under the pseudonym Travis T as a hoax to expose the publisher Publish America. The project was conceived after the publisher made disparaging remarks about the quality of works by genre authors. The book features numerous intentional errors and absurdities, including chapters with non-sequential numbering, two identical chapters, and chapters written by a computer program generating nonsensical text. The narrative is inconsistent, with characters changing gender or race, dying and reappearing without explanation, and the text is riddled with grammatical and spelling errors. Despite its quality, Publish America initially accepted the manuscript for publication, only to retract their offer once the hoax was revealed. The authors later published the book through Lulu, a print-on-demand service, with proceeds going to the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America Emergency Medical Fund. Attack of the Dead Men The attack of the dead men during World War I at Osowiec Fortress is a gruesome tale from August 6, 1915, when Russian soldiers, badly injured by German chlorine gas attacks, heroically fought off the advancing German troops. The Germans, having bombarded the fortress with chlorine gas, expected to easily overcome the garrison. To their horror, around 100 Russian soldiers, suffering severe chemical burns and respiratory damage, mounted a desperate counterattack. These soldiers, appearing like walking corpses with bloodied uniforms and skin, struck fear into the German forces, who retreated in panic despite their superior numbers. This event, marked by the extraordinary resilience and grim condition of the Russian defenders, stands out as a chilling episode of chemical warfare and human tenacity. Baghdad Battery The Baghdad Battery, dating from around 250 BCE to 250 CE, is a curious artifact found near Baghdad, composed of a clay jar, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod, often thought to form a galvanic cell. While it has generated much speculation about the ancient use of electricity, its actual purpose remains a topic of debate. Some believe it could have been used for electroplating, depositing a layer of one metal onto another, a technique known to have been used historically in the region. Others suggest medicinal applications, comparing it to the ancient practice of using electric fish for pain relief. However, rigorous evidence for these uses is lacking, and no ancient texts describe such uses for the device. Modern experiments have demonstrated that when filled with an acidic solution like vinegar or grape juice, the assembly can generate a small electrical charge, roughly 1.1 volts, though this would have been too weak for many practical applications such as electroplating. Alternative theories suggest the artifacts may have been merely storage vessels for sacred scrolls, noting their similarity to other containers from the period. Bart the General Bart the General is the fifth episode from the first season of The Simpsons, which originally aired on February 4, 1990. In this episode, Bart Simpson takes a stand against the school bully, Nelson Muntz, after Nelson targets him for defending his sister Lisa. With the help of his grandfather Abraham Simpson and Herman Herman, an eccentric military antique store owner, Bart organizes the neighborhood kids into a makeshift army. Together they devise a plan to confront and defeat Nelson. The episode culminates in a dramatic and humorous battle leading to a peace treaty between Bart and Nelson, brokered by Herman. The episode is noted for its parodies of war films and includes cultural references to movies like Patton and Full Metal Jacket. Bat Bomb 
The Bat Bomb was a World War II experimental weapon devised by the United States, which aimed to use bats as carriers of small incendiary bombs to be dropped over Japanese cities. The bats, specifically Mexican free-tailed bats chosen for their abundance and flying capabilities, would carry napalm-filled bombs, dispersing and roosting in buildings upon release. The bombs would then detonate, setting widespread fires in the primarily wooden structures. Initiated by Dr. Lytle S. Adams and termed Project X-Ray, the plan faced numerous challenges, including control issues during tests that led to accidental fires at test sites like the Carlsbad Army Airfield. Despite some successful trials indicating the potential of bat bombs to cause extensive fire damage, the project was deemed too unpredictable and was eventually cancelled in favor of more conventional weaponry, as the development of the atomic bomb neared completion. Battle of Castle Itter The Battle of Castle Itter, conducted on May 5, 1945 in Austria, was a unique World War II confrontation where U.S. troops and renegade Wehrmacht soldiers, led by Major Josef Sepp Gangel, collaborated to defend the castle against an assault by SS forces. This rare instance of German and American forces fighting together aimed to protect high-value French prisoners, including former prime ministers and a famous tennis player, who were interned at the castle. Despite the disparity in numbers, with the defenders greatly outnumbered and supported only by limited U.S. military presence and one tank, they managed to hold off the SS until additional American reinforcements arrived. The battle is notable for its demonstration of unusual wartime alliances and the dramatic rescue of prominent prisoners just days before the official end of combat in Europe. Beale Papers The Beale Papers, published as a pamphlet in 1885, narrate the story of Thomas J. Beale and his associates, who supposedly discovered a substantial treasure consisting of gold, silver, and jewels during an expedition in the early 19th century. Beale allegedly buried this treasure in Bedford County, Virginia, and encoded the location and details of the treasure in three separate cipher texts. Of these, only the second cipher has been deciphered, purportedly using the United States Declaration of Independence as a key, revealing the contents and general location of the treasure but not its exact position. The authenticity of the Beale papers and the existence of the treasure have been subjects of debate, with skepticism about the story's veracity and the cipher's solvability. Despite numerous attempts, the other two ciphers remain unsolved, fueling ongoing intrigue and treasure hunts. Bigfin Squid Bigfin squid, belonging to the genus Magnapinna and family Magnapinidae, are deep-sea cephalopods known for their distinctive large fins, which can be as long as 90% of their mantle length. These squids are rare, with few recorded sightings, and are recognized for their elongated thread-like arms and tentacles, which can be up to 20 times the length of their body. They inhabit extreme depths, up to 20,000 feet below the ocean surface, across various oceans. The morphology of bigfin squid is so unique that when initially encountered, they were mistaken for other species. Their diet and behavior remain largely mysterious, due to the challenging conditions of their deep-sea habitat which complicates direct observation. Bachness Eck Disappearance In August 2019, the Bachness Eck Underwater Observatory, situated at the exit of Eckernförde Bay in the Baltic Sea, abruptly ceased transmitting data. A subsequent investigation by divers revealed that the observatory had completely vanished, with only a frayed cable remaining at its location. Weighing over 1,630 pounds and positioned in a restricted research area, the disappearance of the observatory remains a mystery. Speculation ranges from illegal salvage operations to other human interference, though no conclusive evidence has emerged to explain the loss of the observatory which had been actively collecting valuable environmental data since 2016. Boston Molasses Flood The Boston Molasses Flood, which occurred on January 15, 1919, was a catastrophic event where a large storage tank containing over 2.3 million gallons of molasses burst in Boston's north end. The rupture sent a massive wave of molasses speeding through the streets at approximately 35 miles per hour, engulfing everything in its path. This disaster resulted in the deaths of 21 people and injuries to 150 others. The flood caused significant destruction, toppling buildings, crushing vehicles, and clogging streets with sticky molasses. Subsequent investigations revealed that the tank had structural flaws, which were exacerbated by cold temperatures that likely increased the molasses viscosity and the internal pressure of the tank. The tragedy led to a lengthy legal battle, concluding with the tank's owner, United States Industrial Alcohol, found liable for the disaster due to negligence in the tank's construction and maintenance. 
The event has been studied extensively as a case of engineering failure and is remembered for its impact on industrial safety regulations. Brown Note The Brown Note is a hypothetical infrasonic frequency that purportedly causes humans to lose control of their bowels due to resonance effects. Despite popular mention in media and folklore, the Brown Note is considered an urban myth. Scientific testing, including on the TV show Mythbusters, has found no reproducible evidence that such a frequency exists. In these tests, even at high volume levels and using frequencies low enough to be felt rather than heard, no involuntary bodily response akin to the mythic effects of the Brown Note was observed. Cadaver Synod The Cadaver Synod, held in January 897, was a posthumous ecclesiastical trial of Pope Formosus, who had died nearly nine months earlier. His successor, Pope Stephen VI, orchestrated this macabre event, where Formosus's corpse was exhumed, dressed in papal vestments, and placed on trial in the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome. Formosus was accused of several charges including perjury and violating church laws by being elected pope while serving as a bishop elsewhere. Stephen VI, driven by political and personal vendettas, conducted the trial to delegitimize Formosus's papacy. The corpse, symbolically represented by a deacon, was found guilty, stripped of its vestments, and subjected to desecration before being thrown into the Tiber River. The bizarre trial was widely condemned, leading to a swift backlash against Stephen VI, who was imprisoned and killed within months. Subsequent popes annulled the verdict of the Cadaver Synod and restored Formosus's honor. Capgras Delusion Capgras Delusion is a psychiatric disorder where individuals believe that someone they know has been replaced by an identical imposter. This belief typically concerns close friends or family members. It's classified under delusional misidentification syndromes, where the emotional response to familiar faces is disrupted, leading to a sense of unfamiliarity. Though patients recognize the face, the associated emotional connection is absent, causing them to believe the person is a fraud. The condition can stem from various neurological and psychiatric origins, including schizophrenia, brain injury, and dementia. Cecil Hotel The Cecil Hotel, opened in 1924 in downtown Los Angeles, quickly developed a notorious reputation due to a series of disturbing events and criminal activities, including murders, suicides, and its association with serial killers like Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterweger. Originally a glamorous destination, the hotel's fortune declined with the Great Depression, leading it to become a budget hotel often frequented by transients. In recent years, the Cecil gained further infamy through the mysterious death of Elisa Lam in 2013, which attracted global attention and numerous conspiracy theories, partly fueled by viral surveillance footage of Lamb in the hotel's elevator. This case was extensively covered in the Netflix documentary series, Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel. The hotel's dark history and eerie aura have cemented its status as a cultural landmark within the urban lore of Los Angeles. Circleville Letters the Circleville Letters mystery revolves around a series of anonymous, threatening letters that began circulating in the small town of Circleville, Ohio, in the late 1970s. These letters, filled with personal accusations and ominous warnings, targeted various residents, creating a pervasive atmosphere of fear and suspicion. The situation escalated tragically when Ron Gillespie, one of the recipients, died in a suspicious car accident after allegedly receiving a phone call from the letter writer. His sister-in-law's husband, Paul Freshour, was later convicted for his involvement in a related booby trap incident, but maintained his innocence. Despite his incarceration, the letters continued, suggesting multiple perpetrators or a wrongful conviction. The true identity of the letter writer remains unknown, leaving the mystery unresolved and continuing to intrigue both residents and observers. Covão dos Conchos Covão dos Conchos is an artificial lake in Portugal's Serra da Estrela Mountains, Renowned for its visually striking Bellmouth Spillway. Constructed in 1955, this spillway was designed to divert water from Ribeira das Naves to Lagoa Comprida as part of a hydroelectric dam system. This engineering marvel was relatively unknown until 2016, when images of its foliage-lined funnel went viral, sparking widespread interest and in drawing tourists. The spillway, resembling a giant hole in the lake, creates a surreal visual effect as it funnels water through a 1,519-meter tunnel to another lake. The site, located in a remote area of the natural park, is accessible via a scenic but rugged hike, offering an immersive experience in the natural beauty of the Serra da Estrela. Crybaby Bridges Crybaby bridges are found across the United States and are associated with eerie urban legends involving the sounds of a crying baby. 
These legends typically share a tragic backstory involving a baby who met a terrible fate at or near the bridge, often thrown into the water by a distressed mother who may also have taken her own life in remorse. These tales of sorrow and haunting are varied, with some local lore suggesting paranormal phenomena such as ghostly cries or mysterious handprints on cars parked on the bridges. Despite their spooky nature, these stories often reflect deeper societal issues like postpartum depression, domestic violence, or the consequences of isolation and societal judgment. While many consider these stories mere folklore, they continue to draw interest in visitors, perhaps because of the human truths they metaphorically represent about loss and guilt. Dave Matthews Band Incident On August 8, 2004, a bus driver for the Dave Matthews Band released approximately 800 pounds of human waste from the vehicle's septic tank onto a tour boat passing beneath Chicago's Kinsey Street Bridge. The incident caused disgust and health concerns among the affected boat passengers. The band and the bus driver faced legal consequences, leading to a guilty plea for reckless conduct by the driver, community service, and fines. Additionally, the band made significant donations to local environmental and community groups as part of their settlement. Devil's Kettle Devil's Kettle, located at Judge C.R. Magny State Park in Minnesota, features a unique geological phenomenon where the Brule River splits into two waterfalls. One side continues downstream in a typical manner, while the other plunges into a pothole known as Devil's Kettle and appears to vanish. For many years, the disappearance of the water puzzled onlookers and scientists alike. It was only after thorough investigations involving dye tests and flow measurements that hydrologists concluded the water re-emerges further downstream, essentially debunking the myth that it vanished into an abyss. The mystery was largely fueled by the enigmatic nature of the water's underground journey, with earlier speculations ranging from subterranean passages leading to Lake Superior to more fantastical underground worlds. Digby Tatham Warder Major Digby Tatham Warder, an iconic figure of the British Parachute Regiment during World War II, distinguished himself during the Battle of Arnhem, part of Operation Market Garden. Known for his unorthodox method of carrying an umbrella into battle, which he used both as a practical tool and a signal device, Tatham Warder epitomized the blend of eccentricity and bravery. He demonstrated resourcefulness when communication devices failed by using bugle calls, an innovation that proved critical under combat conditions. After being captured, he escaped and played a pivotal role in aiding the Dutch resistance and orchestrating the escape of Allied soldiers across the Rhine in what became known as Operation Pegasus. Post-war, he moved to Kenya, where he engaged in wildlife conservation and community defense during the Mau Mau Uprising, further highlighting his adventurous spirit and leadership. Dublin Whiskey Fire The Dublin Whiskey Fire occurred on June 18, 1875, in the Liberties area of Dublin, a historically poor district dense with distilleries and breweries. The fire ignited at Malone's bonded warehouse, where over 5,000 barrels of whiskey were stored. The highly flammable nature of the undiluted, high-proof whiskey exacerbated the fire, causing barrels to burst and send a flaming river of whiskey flowing through the streets. The fire brigade, led by Captain James Robert Ingram, struggled with conventional methods to extinguish the flames due to the whiskey's flammability. Ultimately, Ingram ingeniously used horse manure to create barriers that absorbed and extinguished the fire. Tragically, the fire led to 13 deaths, not from burns or smoke inhalation, but from alcohol poisoning, as people in the vicinity scooped up and consumed the whiskey flowing through the streets. This unique fire is remembered for the bizarre and chaotic scenes it created, as well as for the innovative firefighting techniques employed. Falun Gong Organ Harvesting Allegations of forced organ harvesting from Falun Gong practitioners in China have raised significant human rights concerns internationally. Reports indicate that prisoners, predominantly Falun Gong members, are subjected to medical testing without consent and their organs forcibly harvested for transplants. This practice reportedly involves a network that includes Chinese medical, military, and public security sectors, exploiting a lack of effective regulation and transparency in the organ donation system. Despite Chinese government denials and claims of reform, investigations by entities such as the UN and independent bodies like the China Tribunal have found compelling evidence suggesting that organ harvesting still occurs often targeting religious and ethnic minorities, and is driven by the lucrative nature of the transplant market. Forest Swastika The forest swastika, discovered in 1992 in Brandenburg, Germany, consisted of approximately 140 larch trees that formed a swastika pattern within a pine forest near Zernikov. The trees were notably planted in 1938, 
but the exact reasons and the identity of those who planted them remain unclear, with several theories suggesting local Nazi sympathies or commemorations. The swastika was only visible from the air during certain times of the year when the larches changed color, contrasting against the evergreen pines. This led to its remaining unnoticed for decades, due to the sensitive nature of the symbol and concerns about it attracting neo-Nazi attention. Efforts were made to obscure the swastika by selectively cutting down trees in 1995 and again in 2000, eventually leading to the substantial removal of the pattern. Frog Boys The Frog Boys refers to a tragic case involving five young boys from Daegu, South Korea, who disappeared on March 26, 1991, while searching for salamander eggs near Mount Waryong. The boys, aged between 9 and 13, were Woo Cheol Wan, Jo Ho Yeon, Kim Young Gyu, Park Chan In, and Kim Jong Sik. Their disappearance quickly escalated into a national issue, prompting extensive search efforts involving the police and military, as ordered by then President Ro Tae Woo. Despite the massive search efforts, the boys remained missing until September 26, 2002, when their remains were discovered by chance by a man gathering acorns in the area. The discovery was shocking. The remains indicated that the boys had died from blunt force trauma, suggesting foul play. The case remains unsolved, with various theories but no concrete answers about the perpetrator or the exact circumstances of their deaths. The statute of limitations on their case expired in 2006, although it was later lifted for first-degree murder in 2015, keeping hopes alive for eventual resolution. Fulcanelli Fulcanelli, an enigmatic figure in 20th century alchemy, was known primarily through his seminal works, Le Mystère de Cathédrale and Les Demeures Philosophales. His real identity remains unknown, obscured by the pseudonym derived from Vulcan, the Roman god of fire, and El, a name for God, suggesting sacred fire. Fulcanelli was a master of esoteric interpretation, using architectural symbolism to explore hermetic principles. Published in the 1920s, his books decode the symbolic language hidden in Gothic cathedrals and offer insights into the secretive world of alchemy. Despite numerous theories about his identity, including potential links to his students like Eugene Cancelier or other figures such as Jean-Julien Hubert Champagne, conclusive evidence about his true identity and fate continues to elude researchers. Ghostwatch Ghostwatch was a British mockumentary that aired on BBC One on Halloween night in 1992. Crafted by writer Stephen Volk and directed by Leslie Manning, the program was presented as a live television investigation into paranormal activities in a North London home, hosted by TV legend Michael Parkinson and assisted by celebrities like Sarah Green and Mike Smith. Despite being pre-recorded, the show mimicked a real-time broadcast, complete with call-ins from the public. This novel approach, along with its realistic portrayal of a ghost investigation, led many viewers to believe the events were actually happening, resulting in widespread public concern. The program featured various paranormal phenomena such as poltergeist activity, which were depicted as causing physical effects like temperature changes and ghostly manifestations, which culminated in a dramatic and chaotic conclusion that left lasting impacts on its audience. Gil Perez Gil Perez was a Spanish soldier from the Philippines who, according to legend, experienced an inexplicable teleportation in 1593. The story recounts that Perez, while on guard duty at the governor's palace in Manila, suddenly found himself in Mexico City's Plaza Mayor. Wearing his guard uniform and unaware of how he arrived there, Perez's claims were initially met with skepticism, and he was arrested for desertion and suspected of witchcraft or devilry. The truth of his story was only verified months later when a ship from the Philippines arrived in Mexico, carrying news of the governor's assassination, a fact Perez had known about, confirming his previous presence in Manila. This story was not documented until over a century later, and remains a mix of historical mystery and folklore, with explanations ranging from paranormal activity to dimensional shifting. Glitter Purchaser The identity of the world's largest glitter purchaser is shrouded in secrecy, sparking widespread speculation and intrigue. Despite the curiosity, details about this buyer remain undisclosed. Glitter, commonly associated with craft and cosmetic industries, also appears in unexpected applications, including automotive paints and potential military uses. This secret buyer's substantial demand for glitter underscores its broad utility across various industries. The mystery surrounding their identity adds a layer of intrigue to an otherwise everyday material and has been discussed in various media outlets, reflecting a keen public interest in unveiling this hidden consumer. Gravity Hills 
Gravity hills, also known as magnetic hills, mystery hills, or anti-gravity hills, are locations where the landscape creates an optical illusion, making a slight downhill slope appear to be an uphill slope. This phenomenon causes objects like cars left in neutral to appear as if they are rolling uphill against gravity. The illusion is primarily due to the layout of the surrounding land and the absence of a horizon, which disrupts the visual cues that allow for accurate perception of slope. The effect can be so convincing that it has sparked supernatural legends and folklore around such sites, though scientific studies confirm that these hills do not defy gravity, but rather trick our senses through their unique topography. Gruner Z. Gruner Z, located in Styria, Austria, in a village named Tragos, is renowned for its vibrant emerald green waters and dynamic seasonal changes. Known as the Caribbean of Styria, the lake derives its striking color from the limestone sediment in the meltwater that fills it each spring. As the snow from the surrounding Hochschwab Mountains melts, the lake expands from a shallow park to a depth of about 12 meters, submerging benches, bridges, and trails beneath its waters, creating a surreal underwater landscape visible until it recedes again in late summer. This transformation has made Gruner Sea a favored spot for photographers and nature lovers. To preserve its delicate ecosystem, authorities banned diving and other water sports in 2016, although the area continues to attract visitors for its picturesque hiking trails and tranquil natural beauty. Hammersmith Ghost In 1804 in Hammersmith, London, the tragic case of the Hammersmith Ghost involved the mistaken identity and subsequent murder of Thomas Millwood, a bricklayer commonly mistaken for a ghost due to his white work clothes. Francis Smith, believing Millwood to be a spectral apparition, fatally shot him. Smith's trial for willful murder highlighted the legal challenge of whether a mistaken belief could justify violent action, a debate that influenced English criminal law significantly. The initial verdict of manslaughter was not accepted by the court, leading to Smith's conviction for murder, although his sentence was later commuted to a year of hard labor following a royal pardon. The case exposed gaps in the legal understanding of mistaken beliefs as a defense, which were not formally addressed until the Court of Appeals decision in R. V. Williams in 1984, eventually influencing the drafting of the Criminal Justice and Immigration Act 2008. Charvey's Resort Hotel Bombing On August 26 or 27, 1980, the Harvey's Resort Hotel in State Line, Nevada, was the target of a dramatic extortion attempt involving a sophisticated bomb containing 1,000 pounds of dynamite. The device was disguised as a photocopier delivered by men in white jumpsuits, who demanded $3 million to provide disarming instructions. Despite extensive efforts to neutralize the bomb, it exploded, causing significant damage estimated at $18 million, although there were no casualties. The mastermind, John Burgess, was motivated by gambling losses and constructed the bomb with the help of associates, including his girlfriend and two other men. The case, which involved complex legal proceedings, concluded with Burgess receiving a life sentence, while his accomplices faced various charges and sentences. Havana Syndrome Havana Syndrome first emerged in 2016 among U.S. and Canadian embassy staff in Havana, Cuba, with symptoms including auditory and sensory disturbances, headaches, dizziness, and cognitive issues. The exact cause remains elusive despite extensive investigations, leading to theories ranging from sonic attacks to psychological stress or mass psychogenic illness. No definitive evidence of physical harm such as brain injury has been detected in affected individuals, complicating the diagnosis and understanding of the syndrome. U.S. government responses have evolved as more cases have been reported worldwide, affecting diplomats and intelligence officers in various countries, suggesting a broader pattern of unexplained health incidents rather than isolated events specific to Cuba. Head transplants. Head transplants involve transplanting one organism's head onto the body of another, which remains an experimental and highly controversial concept primarily discussed in theoretical terms and speculative scenarios. Although neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero gained media attention by claiming that a human head transplant could occur as early as 2017 or 2018, such claims have been met with significant skepticism from the broader medical and scientific communities due to numerous ethical, technical, and physiological challenges. These challenges include issues of immune rejection, the complexities of reconnecting the spinal cord, and profound ethical questions regarding identity and the quality of life post-surgery. Additionally, the procedure's high costs and the potential use of a body whose organs could save multiple lives raise further ethical concerns. Hitler Teapot The controversy around the Hitler Teapot arose in 2013 
when a Michael Graves designed stainless steel tea kettle, sold by J.C. Penney, garnered public and media attention due to its perceived resemblance to Adolf Hitler. This unintended resemblance was particularly noted in the kettle's handle and spout, which some said mimicked Hitler's hair and saluting arm. The public reaction was amplified when images of the teapot featured on a billboard in California went viral on social media platforms like Reddit. J.C. Penney responded to the controversy by stating that any resemblance was unintentional and subsequently removed the billboard. Despite, or perhaps because of, the controversy, the teapot sold out quickly and later appeared on eBay at significantly inflated prices. The incident has been discussed in terms of pareidolia, the psychological phenomenon where people see familiar patterns, like faces, in random objects. Hitogata. Hitogata are traditional Japanese paper dolls that serve as representations of humans in various Shinto rituals. They are often used in purification ceremonies, where participants transfer their impurities or sins onto the dolls by rubbing them against their bodies. The dolls are then floated down a river or put to sea, symbolically carrying away the person's misdeeds or impurities. This practice, known as Nagashi Bina, typically involves crafted paper dolls that vary in design from simple flat figures to more elaborate representations adorned with kimono patterns. The use of hitogata dates back to historical purification rites, and these dolls continue to play a role in contemporary Shinto observances, merging ancient tradition with modern religious practices. Hong Kong 97 Hong Kong 97 is an unlicensed 2D shooting game developed by HappySoft, released in 1995 for the Super Famicom. Known for its poor quality, the game features bizarre content and crude graphics. Set around the time of Hong Kong's handover to China in 1997, the game's storyline involves a character named Chin, tasked by the Chinese government to eliminate criminals. The gameplay is repetitive, with Chin shooting at endless waves of enemies to the loop of a single song. The game gained notoriety for its controversial elements, including a game over screen that uses a real image of a deceased person, which has been widely criticized as tasteless and offensive. Hyphen War The Hyphen War refers to the political disagreement in 1990 over the official name of Czechoslovakia following the fall of its communist government in 1989. The conflict primarily revolved around whether the new country name should include a hyphen, highlighting the tension between Czechs and Slovaks regarding national identity and federation status. Initially, the country was renamed the Czechoslovak Federative Republic, without a hyphen in Czech, and with a hyphen in Slovak to acknowledge both national groups. However, this arrangement did not settle the dispute. On April 20, 1990, a further compromise led to the renaming of the country to the Czech and Slovak Federative Republic, which included the names of both nationalities and used capitalization to emphasize their equal status. Despite these efforts, underlying nationalistic tensions persisted, contributing to the peaceful dissolution of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia in 1993. Janet Jackson Blackout Baseline The Janet Jackson Blackout Baseline, notably from her song Rhythm Nation, gained notoriety for its ability to crash certain models of laptops due to a unique technical anomaly. The baseline of this song matched the natural resonant frequency of a specific 5,400 RPM hard drive used in some laptops during the early 2000s. This resonance caused the hard drive's components to vibrate in a way that led to system crashes. Microsoft engineer Raymond Chen detailed how the frequency from the song would disrupt these hard drives, prompting manufacturers to incorporate a custom audio filter to mitigate the effect and prevent future crashes. Juan Pujol Garcia Juan Pujol Garcia, known by the British codename Garbo, was a pivotal double agent during World War II who played a crucial role in deceiving Nazi Germany about the Allied invasion plans. Initially from Spain, Pujol harbored a strong anti-fascist stance, which led him to approach the Allies with an offer to spy on the Nazis. Despite initial rejections, he established himself as a trustworthy Nazi agent and then turned to the British to offer his services as a double agent. Under the supervision of MI5, he created an extensive network of fictitious spies and fed the Germans misleading information, which significantly influenced the success of the D-Day landings by convincing them that the Allies would invade at Pas de Calais instead of Normandy. His deception was so effective that the Germans awarded him the Iron Cross for his supposed contributions, while the British honored him with an MBE for his real contributions to their efforts. Kaffa Club and Island Kaffa Club and Island, known in Greenlandic as Inuit Kekertat, is located off the northern coast of Greenland and holds the distinction of being the northernmost piece of land on Earth. 
Discovered in 1900 by American explorer Robert E. Peary, the island was named in 1921 by Danish explorer Lauga Koch after a coffee club at the University of Copenhagen Geological Museum. The island is uninhabited, approximately 713.5 kilometers from the North Pole and spans about one kilometer in length. Geographically, Kafaklubben Island is characterized by its harsh polar conditions, hosting some sparse vegetation like the Arctic poppy and purple saxifrage despite its extreme environment. Kelly Hopkinsville Encounter The Kelly Hopkinsville Encounter, which occurred on the night of August 21, 1955, in Christian County, Kentucky, is one of the most famous and controversial reported UFO incidents. Eleven people from two families reported an encounter with small, goblin-like creatures with large heads and glowing eyes, which they claimed were impervious to bullets. The families, who were gathered at a farmhouse in the rural town of Kelly, described a prolonged siege by these beings lasting several hours, during which they fired at the creatures with no apparent effect. Despite a thorough investigation by local police, no tangible evidence of the creatures was found, only evidence of the family's distress and numerous bullet holes from the gunfire. The incident is often cited by UFO enthusiasts as one of the most significant close encounters, while skeptics suggest more prosaic explanations such as misidentifying great horned owls as extraterrestrial beings. Klerksdorp Spheres Klerksdorp Spheres, found in three billion-year-old pyrophyllite deposits near Ottostal, South Africa, are small, rounded to disc-shaped objects with diameters up to 10 centimeters, often marked by concentric grooves. Initially thought to be artifacts of ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial origins due to their precise shapes and smooth surfaces, these spheres have been scientifically identified as natural concretions. They formed from mineral precipitation within sedimentary or volcanic material, where geological processes like the layering of sediments during formation created their distinctive grooved appearance. These findings debunk theories of their artificial creation, aligning them with other known geological concretions formed through similar natural processes. Cryptos Cryptos is an enigmatic sculpture by artist Jim Sanborn, installed at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia in 1990. It features four encrypted messages, three of which have been solved, with the fourth still resisting decryption despite ongoing efforts by cryptanalysts and enthusiasts. The sculpture consists of a copper plate with encrypted text, and the deciphered sections reference layers of hidden information and point toward further mysteries. Sanborn collaborated with a retired CIA cryptographer, Ed Scheidt, to devise the complex ciphers, drawing on historical encryption techniques and adding intentional misspellings and anomalies to challenge solvers. Over the years, Sanborn has released additional clues to aid in solving the final passage, underscoring the sculpture's role as both a piece of art and a perpetual puzzle. Lake Retba and Lake Hillier Lake Retba in Senegal and Lake Hillier in Australia are notable for their distinctive pink hues, attributed to the presence of Dunaliella salina algae, which produces a red pigment to absorb sunlight. Lake Retba, also known as Lac Rose, lies northeast of Dakar, separated from the Atlantic by narrow dunes, exhibiting its most vivid color during the dry season from November to June. It is highly saline, similar to the Dead Sea, making it buoyant and primarily used for salt harvesting. Lake Hillier, located on Middle Island off Western Australia, was first recorded by navigator Matthew Flinders in 1802 and is surrounded by eucalyptus and paperback trees. Despite its small size, the striking pink color of Lake Hillier is visible even from the surface and is a popular tourist attraction, although it is no longer used for salt extraction. Man in the Iron Mask The Man in the Iron Mask was an unidentified prisoner held in French prisons during the reign of Louis XIV notable for the mask he was required to wear to hide his identity, which has spurred centuries of speculation and legend. Arrested in 1669 and eventually dying in 1703, his true identity remains unknown, with theories suggesting he could have been anyone from a lowly valet to a high-ranking individual entangled in political intrigue. His story was immortalized in literature, most famously by Alexandre Dumas, who portrayed him as the king's twin brother, a dramatic embellishment without historical evidence. Historical records refer to him as Eustache Dauger, and he was kept in isolation under strict instructions that he should be killed if he revealed his identity, leading to numerous theories about his significance or threat to the state. Margate Shell Grotto The Margate Shell Grotto, located in Kent, England, is a subterranean passageway, richly decorated with approximately 4.6 million seashells, covering 2,000 square feet in intricate mosaics. Discovered in 1835 by James Newlove and his son Joshua, 
Its origins and purpose remain a mystery, with theories ranging from an ancient pagan temple to a Victorian-era folly. Despite various investigations, no conclusive evidence has surfaced regarding its construction date or builders. The grotto features designs that some interpret as symbolic of life's journey, with celestial alignments noted during the summer solstice suggesting its use in rituals or as a calendar. Today, it is preserved as a historical monument and continues to attract visitors intrigued by its beauty and enigmatic past. Medieval Marginalia Medieval Marginalia, the decorative and often whimsical illustrations found in the margins of illuminated manuscripts, serve as a unique window into the cultural, social, and personal aspects of medieval life. These marginal drawings range from the sacred to the profane, including fantastical creatures, everyday life scenes, and humorous or crude depictions, reflecting both the artist's imagination and the societal norms of the time. Not merely decorative, these illustrations often carry symbolic meanings or commentaries on the text, providing insights into the medieval mind's concerns with morality, death, and the afterlife. Marginalia also reveal personal touches by the scribes or readers, such as notes or reactions to the text, linking the medieval readers and modern viewers through shared engagement with the manuscript. Million Dollar Point Million Dollar Point, located off the coast of Espiritu Santo in Vanuatu, is a renowned underwater dumping ground where the U.S. military disposed of surplus equipment after World War II. As the war concluded, logistical challenges and economic considerations led to the decision not to repatriate vast amounts of military gear. Negotiations to sell the equipment to the local Franco-British administration failed, prompting the U.S. forces to dump the equipment into the sea. This act included everything from trucks and bulldozers to crates of supplies, amounting to millions of dollars worth of materials. The site has since become a popular dive destination, known for its vast accumulation of war machinery submerged in clear waters, offering a unique glimpse into post-war military disposal practices and creating an artificial reef environment. Monkey Hate Monkey Hate is a disturbing online phenomenon where individuals exhibit intense animosity towards monkeys, often manifesting in the creation and distribution of abusive videos on social media platforms. This behavior not only includes acts of physical and psychological torture against these animals, but also garners significant viewer engagement and financial profit for content creators. The content is spread across platforms like YouTube and Facebook, drawing in billions of views and fostering a community where such cruelty is normalized and even encouraged. The underlying motivations may include dehumanization of the animals, seeing them as nuisances rather than sentient beings, which mirrors broader societal issues regarding animal welfare and ethical treatment. Efforts to address this issue involve enhancing animal protection laws, increasing public awareness, and pushing for stricter content regulations on social media platforms to mitigate the spread and influence of such harmful content. Mount Wingen Mount Wingen, commonly known as Burning Mountain, is located near Wingen, New South Wales, Australia, and is renowned for housing the world's oldest known, naturally burning coal seam fire. This fire has been smoldering for approximately 6,000 years and is situated about 30 meters underground. The coal seam fire slowly migrates southward at a rate of about 1 meter per year, covering a distance of around 6.5 kilometers over its long history. The origin of the fire is speculated to be from a lightning strike or bushfire, though it could also be attributed to aboriginal burning practices. The fire's effects are visible on the surface, areas it has recently passed under show little vegetation, and a white, ashen appearance due to heat affecting the soil and local flora. Despite the barren landscape near the fire, Burning Mountain is a significant tourist attraction, offering a unique geological spectacle. Visitors can explore the site via a well-maintained walking track, which features educational signs and ends at a viewing platform overlooking the currently smoldering area. Market Market is a small, uninhabited scary in the Baltic Sea, divided between Finland and Sweden due to an unusual and complex historical agreement. The island is known for its irregular division, resulting in a curved and convoluted border that effectively makes parts of the Finnish territory surround a piece of Sweden, and vice versa. This odd arrangement came about because the original treaty delineating the maritime border was based on the positions of lighthouses, rather than precise geographical features. Market is also noted for its lighthouse, which has been an important navigation mark in the Baltic since the 19th century. The surrounding marine area is popular for sailing and is ecologically significant, hosting diverse bird species and marine life, making it a subject of interest for both conservation efforts and maritime navigation. Nagoro Village Nagoro, known as the Village of Dolls, 
is a small declining village in the Iya Valley of Tokushima Prefecture on Japan's Shikoku Island. This village has gained international attention due to its unique population of life-size dolls that outnumber the human residents. These dolls, created by local artist Tsukimi Ayano, are positioned throughout the village in various everyday scenes, sitting at bus stops, working in fields, or attending school, to mimic the daily life of the community members who have either moved away or passed away. Ayano began making these dolls as a way to alleviate the loneliness felt due to the village's dwindling population and to honor past villagers. The handmade dolls are crafted from straw and old clothes, and each one has a name and a backstory, embodying the spirit of the village's former life. Over time, the dolls have become a tourist attraction, drawing visitors curious to see this poignant tableau of rural Japanese life. Norilsk Norilsk, located in Krasnoyarsk Krai, Russia, is one of the northernmost cities in the world, situated well above the Arctic Circle. Established in 1935 and gaining city status in 1953, Norilsk grew around substantial nickel deposits, making it a significant global nickel and palladium producer. Its heavy industrialization, primarily through Norilsk nickel, has also led to severe environmental pollution, particularly with sulfur dioxide, contributing to its status as one of the most polluted cities globally. The extreme Arctic conditions define its climate, with long, bitterly cold winters. Despite these challenges, Norilsk remains a pivotal industrial hub in Russia. The city has a unique historical footprint, initially developed by Gulag prisoners, and it continues to be a closed city, where foreign visitors require special permission to enter. Obaki Kaidan Obaki Kaidan, translating to ghost stairs in Japanese, is a mysterious and intriguing phenomenon located near the Nezu Shrine in Tokyo. These stairs are famed for their eerie characteristic where the number of steps counted when ascending differs from the number counted when descending. According to folklore, climbing the stairs results in 40 steps, whereas descending counts only 39. This curious discrepancy has led to its nickname and a reputation for being a supernatural or ghostly site, attracting both tourists and folklore enthusiasts intrigued by its mystical aura. Olga of Kiev Olga of Kiev, who lived from around 890 to 969, was a significant figure in the history of Kievan Rus, acting as regent for her son Sviatoslav from 945 until 960. After her husband Igor was murdered by the Drevlians, a tribe that had ceased paying tribute to Kievan Rus, Olga took revenge in a series of brutal acts against them. These actions secured her control and demonstrated her formidable leadership during a turbulent period. Olga later converted to Christianity, making her one of the first rulers in Kievan Rus' to adopt the religion, although it was her grandson Vladimir who would eventually make it the state religion. Her conversion marked a pivotal shift in the religious landscape of the region. Olga's role as a ruler and a saint, she was canonized by the Orthodox Church, illustrates her complex legacy as both a vengeful leader and a pious Christian. Olympic Exchange Theory The Olympic Exchange Theory is an economic and social framework focusing on the exchange of values, culture, and resources that occur during the Olympic Games. This theory is rooted in the concepts of social capital and social exchange theory, suggesting that significant social value is generated through interactions and exchanges between participants and spectators within the Olympic environment. The theory posits that the Olympics foster a unique form of social capital, benefiting host cities and countries by enhancing global prestige and fostering international relationships. It highlights the impact of live viewing experiences over broadcast experiences in terms of emotional engagement and memory formation, suggesting that those who experience the Olympics in person gain a more profound sense of connection and community, thereby accumulating more social capital compared to those who participate through media consumption. Opentopia Opentopia is a unique online platform that aggregates live webcam feeds from around the world, allowing users to view real-time footage from various locations. It was established with the goal of sharing the wonders of the world through the lens of webcams placed in diverse settings, from serene landscapes to bustling urban centers. The website sources its content by identifying publicly accessible webcams, which are then listed in a user-friendly interface that categorizes them by themes such as nature, cities, and more, making it easy for users to find webcam feeds that match their interests. Opentopia also emphasizes community interaction by allowing users to comment on webcam feeds, fostering a sense of connection among viewers globally. Ori Chef Ori Chef, also referred to as Marjorie Chef among other variants, is a peculiar case involving multiple Facebook accounts all appearing to be owned by the same person. These profiles are interconnected, 
with each being friends only with accounts bearing similar names, all variations of Marjorie. The real intrigue lies not just in the multiplicity of accounts, but also in the content shared across these platforms. The posts oscillate between mundane personal desires, such as future wishes regarding cremation, to disturbingly graphic images. One peculiar post expressed a desire to harm a child, though there is no concrete evidence to support the claim that this was anything more than an isolated post. Attempts to interact with these accounts have led to explanations such as accidental account creation on public computers, suggesting potential hacking, though this does not convincingly explain why multiple accounts were made. The emergence of numerous fake accounts following the viral spread of Ori Chef's story complicates efforts to discern the original account's authenticity or the motivations behind its creation. The case remains a blend of internet myth and digital footprint puzzle, making it a curious subject of online folklore without a definitive explanation. Orontius Phineas Map The Orontius Phineas Map, crafted by French cartographer Orance Phineas in 1531, is distinguished by its detailed depiction of the Antarctic region depicted without ice, long before the continent was officially recognized and explored in the 20th century. This map is noted for its use of a cordiform, heart-shaped projection, a popular style during the Renaissance for depicting the spherical Earth on a flat surface. The map's accuracy regarding the geography of Antarctica, including coastlines and interior details, has stirred debate and speculation about how early cartographers like Fine could have had such precise knowledge of the region. Ossuaries. Ossuaries are specialized containers or buildings designed to store human skeletal remains, primarily used when burial space is scarce. Historically, ossuaries served practical purposes such as coping with overcrowded cemeteries, as seen in the catacombs of Paris, or cultural practices like in Jewish traditions during the Second Temple period, where they were commonly made of limestone and occasionally featured inscriptions identifying the deceased. Notable examples include the Sedlec Ossuary in the Czech Republic, known for its elaborate bone decorations, and the Duomont Ossuary in France, which holds the remains of soldiers from the Battle of Verdun. Ossuaries not only manage space efficiently, but also reflect diverse cultural attitudes towards death and remembrance, ranging from memorialization to the practical reclamation of burial plots. Prahladjani Prahladjani, also known as Mataji, was an Indian breatharian who claimed to have lived without food or water since 1940, attributing his sustenance to a spiritual experience with the goddess Amba. His claims attracted both attention and skepticism globally. Scientific studies, including those sponsored by the Indian Defense Research and Development Organization, observed Jani over extended periods during which he reportedly did not consume any food or water. These studies reported no significant physiological changes in Jani, although he was allowed to gargle and bathe, which raised concerns about the thoroughness and transparency of the research. Critics, including prominent skeptics and nutrition experts, dismissed his claims as physiologically impossible, suggesting that the conditions of the studies might have allowed for discrepancies. Johnny passed away in 2020 at the age of 90, with his followers maintaining that he died of old age and continued to believe in the spiritual legitimacy of his claims. Pumapunku Pumapunku, an ancient architectural marvel, forms part of the Tiwanaku site near Bolivia's Lake Titicaca. Recognized for its intricate stonework and large stone blocks, some weighing over 100 tons, it showcases an advanced level of craftsmanship and design from as early as 536 AD. These stones, expertly cut and transported from distant quarries, suggest a highly organized and skilled society. Pumapunku's layout indicates its use as a significant ceremonial center, imbued with cultural and religious importance evident in its complex constructions like terraced platform mounds and sunken courts. Despite its ruinous state, the site has sparked various hypotheses about the technological prowess of its builders, ranging from conventional archaeological interpretations of human ingenuity to more speculative theories involving extraterrestrial influences. Karlinguac The Karlinguac, or Pants Arch, is a unique rock formation located in the remote region of the Brodeur Peninsula, on Baffin Island, Canada. This natural arch, resembling a pair of pants, is situated in a saltwater pool and has sparked both awe and skepticism due to its unusual shape. Initially thought to be a digital fabrication, the arch has been verified as a genuine geological feature formed by the erosive forces of wind and water on sedimentary rock, particularly sandstone. The presence of quartz within the formation enhances its resistance to erosion, contributing to the arch's durability and the distinct horizontal layering indicative of its Paleozoic-era origin. 
dating it between 250 to 600 million years old. Red Sprites Red Sprites are transient luminous events that occur high above intense thunderstorms, primarily visible at night. These large-scale electrical discharges can reach altitudes between 50 to 90 kilometers, appearing as red at higher altitudes and fading to blue lower down due to their interactions with nitrogen in the atmosphere. Unlike typical lightning that occurs within clouds or between clouds and the ground, red sprites are related to the presence of positive lightning within the thunderstorm below them. They manifest as vertical streaks or tendrils, often with a jellyfish-like appearance, and are fleeting, lasting only milliseconds. Red sprites are not only visually striking but also significant scientifically, as they help researchers understand atmospheric electricity and the Earth's electrical balance. Despite their elusive nature, advancements in high-speed photography and observational technology have improved our understanding of these phenomena. Rollstone Boulder The Rollstone Boulder, a significant glacial erratic, originally rested atop Rollstone Hill in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. This 110-ton rock, believed to have been deposited by glaciers from central New Hampshire around 10,000 years ago, was historically a local landmark. Due to threats of destruction from nearby quarrying operations in 1929, the boulder was dynamited into pieces and subsequently relocated to a traffic island in downtown Fitchburg, where it was reassembled and filled with concrete for stability. This reassembly aimed to preserve the boulder's historical and cultural significance. Today it stands not only as a geological curiosity, but also as a piece of community art, celebrated in local culture and history. Roy Sullivan Roy Sullivan, an American park ranger at Shenandoah National Park in Virginia, is famously known for surviving seven lightning strikes between 1942 and 1977, earning him the nickname Human Lightning Conductor. His first strike occurred while he was in a fire lookout tower without a lightning rod, which set the tower ablaze and resulted in injuries that included a seared leg and a hole in his shoe. Subsequent strikes over the years involved various scenarios where he was hit directly or indirectly, leading to further burns and injuries. Despite the high risk associated with his job and location, the probability of being struck so many times was extraordinarily low. Sullivan's experiences contributed to his fear of storms, prompting him to carry water to extinguish fires and to seek shelter in his truck during thunderstorms. Tragically, Sullivan died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in 1983, not from lightning but from despair over an unrequited love. Sawney Bean Clan The Sawney Bean Clan is a legendary tale from 16th century Scotland, notorious for their gruesome acts of cannibalism and murder. Alexander Sawney Bean, the clan's patriarch, allegedly led a 45-member family which included his wife and offspring from incest, in a secluded cave by the sea. The clan is said to have ambushed, killed, and eaten over a thousand people. They remained undetected for 25 years until their heinous activities were exposed after an attack on a couple returning from a fair. This led to the intervention of King James VI, who supposedly led a large manhunt that resulted in the clan's capture and execution without trial. Historically, the veracity of these events is widely questioned, with some suggesting the story was concocted or exaggerated as anti-Scottish propaganda. Sentinelese Tribes The Sentinelese tribe, residing on the remote North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal, remains one of the few uncontacted and fiercely independent peoples in the world, actively resisting external contact for thousands of years. Estimated to number between several dozen to around a hundred, the Sentinelese maintain a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, crafting tools and weapons from materials washed ashore or from shipwrecks. Their island is surrounded by sharp coral reefs and dense forests, which contribute to their isolation and defense against intruders. Historical encounters, often ending in violence, underscore their capacity and determination to remain isolated. Most notably, the killing of American missionary John Allen Chow in 2018, who illegally attempted to make contact. To protect the tribe from external diseases to which they have no immunity, and to maintain their autonomy, the Indian government has made it illegal to approach the island. Simo Haiha Simo Haiha, known as the White Death, was a Finnish sniper during the Winter War between Finland and the Soviet Union, noted for having over 500 confirmed kills, one of the highest counts recorded by a sniper in major war history. Born in 1905 in Rautjärvi, Finland, Haiha's skills were honed through his pre-war life as a farmer and competitive shooter. Utilizing a Mosin Nagant M2830 rifle without telescopic sights to prevent glare, he adapted to the harsh Finnish winters by using white camouflage and making strategic use of the landscape for concealment. 
His sniper tactics included compacting snow in front of his position to hide muzzle flashes and keeping his mouth filled with snow to obscure his breath, which could be seen in the cold air. Heiha's military career ended when he was severely wounded by an explosive bullet in 1940, shortly before the war concluded. Despite significant injuries, he recovered and lived a quiet life until his death in 2002. Slamfest 99 Slamfest 99, also known as Super Smash Bros. Live, was a unique promotional event held on April 24, 1999, at the MGM Grand Adventures theme park in Las Vegas, Nevada. Organized by Nintendo of America and the public relations firm Golan Harris, the event was designed to promote the North American release of the video game Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64. The highlight of Slamfest 99 was a staged wrestling match featuring costume characters from the game Mario, Donkey Kong, Pikachu, and Yoshi performing in a real-life ring, which was also live-streamed on the web using RealPlayer. Despite its creative setup, no video footage of the event survives today, and it is considered lost media. The event also included interactive demo kiosks where attendees could play Super Smash Bros. before and after the live match. Sonic for Real Justice Sonic for Real Justice was a Tumblr blog created in 2015, which gained notoriety for its satirical portrayal of social justice issues through the personas of Sonic the Hedgehog characters. The blog quickly attracted attention for its controversial and humorous content, which often parodied extreme social justice rhetoric. The moderators, who used Sonic character names, frequently engaged in heated discussions and disputes, which added to the blog's chaotic nature. The conflicts between moderators and the content itself led to various dramas, resulting in the blog becoming a subject of fascination and criticism within online communities. Despite its initial popularity, the blog eventually became inactive, and its original posts are now considered part of internet history, often discussed in retrospectives about online culture and meme history. Spring-Heeled Jack Spring-Heeled Jack is a legendary figure from Victorian folklore, first reported in 1837 in London. Described as a diabolical character capable of making extraordinary leaps, Spring-Heeled Jack was said to terrorize people with his frightening appearance, which included metallic claws and glowing eyes. Over time, he was reportedly seen in various parts of England, with encounters often involving attacks on women, characterized by his ability to spit blue flames and his swift, bounding escape. The last reported sighting of Spring-Heeled Jack was in Liverpool in 1904. The true nature of Spring-Heeled Jack, whether he was a man, a myth, or some blend of the two, remains a subject of speculation. The figure has inspired numerous articles, books, and adaptations, embedding him deeply in the urban mythos of Britain. Swiss Invasions of Liechtenstein Switzerland has accidentally invaded Liechtenstein several times, incidents that are notable given the historical neutrality and non-aggression typically associated with the Swiss. The first of these incidents occurred on October 14, 1968, when the Swiss army mistakenly fired mortars into Liechtenstein during a training exercise near the border. Subsequent incidents included Swiss soldiers entering Liechtenstein due to navigation errors during training exercises, with one notable event in 1976, when Swiss soldiers and their horses ended up in Liechtenstein overnight. In 1985, another significant mishap involved the firing of rockets by the Swiss army, which led to a forest fire in Liechtenstein. The most recent known accidental invasion happened in February 2007, when Swiss troops, again on a training exercise, mistakenly crossed into Liechtenstein due to bad weather and navigation errors. In all cases, these invasions were resolved without conflict, often treated with a sense of bemusement given the close and generally amicable relations between the two countries. Tensegrity Tensegrity, a portmanteau of tensional integrity, is a structural principle where components in compression are suspended within a network of continuous tension, allowing the structure to be stable yet flexible. This architectural and scientific concept was popularized by Buckminster Fuller and is characterized by the use of floating compression members, such as bars or struts, which do not touch each other but are held in place by a continuous network of tensioned members like cables or tendons. This configuration enables structures that are lightweight yet extremely robust, finding applications in various fields including robotics, where it is used to create highly adaptable and resilient robots, and biology, for modeling the mechanical behaviors of the human body, such as the spine which exemplifies tensegrity in its ability to balance tension and compression for flexible movement. The Battle of Los Angeles The Battle of Los Angeles, also known as the Great Los Angeles Air Raid, 
took place on the night of February 24th to 25th, 1942. Following a real attack by a Japanese submarine near Santa Barbara, panic and war readiness heightened in Los Angeles. Radar detected unidentified objects off the coast, leading to a blackout and mass anti-aircraft gunfire across the city, despite the lack of any visible enemy aircraft. Over 1,400 rounds were fired during the chaos, which resulted in material damage from falling shrapnel and indirect civilian casualties, including traffic-related deaths and heart attacks induced by stress. Initially thought to involve enemy aircraft, the event was later deemed a false alarm by Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox, with subsequent speculation pointing to weather balloons or psychological warfare tactics as potential causes. The Wyoming Incident The Wyoming Incident, also known as the Wyoming Hijacking, is a fictional event created as part of an alternate reality game and creepypasta. It involves a supposed television broadcast hijacking, where a hacker interrupted the signal of a local TV station in Niobrara County, Wyoming, replacing it with a video of disembodied human heads expressing various emotions. This video allegedly caused symptoms like vomiting, hallucinations, and headaches among viewers due to specific frequencies embedded in the broadcast. The story originated on the Something Awful forums and was later popularized through videos and further online discussions, contributing to its status as a notable example of early internet horror folklore. The Yellow Fleet The Yellow Fleet, comprising 15 international ships, was trapped in the Suez Canal from 1967 to 1975 due to blockages caused by the Six-Day War between Israel and Egypt. These ships, stuck in the Great Bitter Lake, formed a community known as the Great Bitter Lake Association, which organized social activities, including a version of the Olympics, to cope with the isolation. They even created a unique postal system using handmade stamps, now collector's items. This makeshift community fostered international cooperation amidst the geopolitical tensions of their respective countries. The canal reopened in 1975 after clearance operations, but most ships, except two German ones that returned under their own power, required towing due to maintenance issues from prolonged inactivity. Tian Ducheng Tian Ducheng, initiated in 2007 near Hangzhou, China, is a residential area modeled after Paris, featuring a 108-meter replica of the Eiffel Tower and other Parisian landmarks such as the Arc de Triomphe. Designed to house up to 10,000 people, it encompasses Parisian-style architecture, gardens and boulevards across a 31 square kilometer area. Despite its grand design, Tian Ducheng had a low initial occupancy, leading some to describe it as a ghost town, although the population has since grown to around 30,000 residents. The development is particularly popular among newlyweds for photo shoots and serves as a unique tourist destination, albeit less bustling than anticipated. It reflects a broader trend in China of constructing replica towns that offer domestic versions of foreign aesthetics. Time Cube. TimeCube was a controversial and often incomprehensible theory proposed by Otis Eugene Ray, known as Gene Ray, around 1997. He described TimeCube as a higher order of reality, positing that each day on Earth actually consisted of four simultaneous days occurring in one rotation of the Earth. According to Ray, modern sciences and education systems suppress this wisdom, which he believed could revolutionize human understanding of time and space. The theory was presented on his personal website, which was notorious for its complex, verbose, and often incoherent content. Ray's ideas were widely dismissed by academics and scientists, and are considered a classic example of pseudoscience. He claimed that his theory was ignored by the academic world due to a conspiracy to suppress his revolutionary ideas. Toynbee Tiles The Toynbee Tiles are mysterious plaques embedded in asphalt in various major cities across the United States and several cities in South America, first appearing in the early 1980s. These tiles are roughly the size of an American license plate and bear a cryptic inscription that generally reads, Toynbee idea in Kubrick's 2001 Resurrect Dead on planet Jupiter. The origin and meaning of these tiles remain largely unknown, though they are believed to be linked to British historian Arnold Toynbee's philosophy about civilizational death and resurrection, mixed with themes from Stanley Kubrick's film, 2001 A Space Odyssey. The tiles are thought to be installed using linoleum and asphalt sealant, often under the cover of tar paper which conceals them until the paper erodes away. Turkmenistan Hell Pit The Darvaza Gas Crater, commonly known as the Door to Hell, located in Turkmenistan's Karakum Desert, is a fiery natural phenomenon originating from a Soviet drilling accident in 1971. This accident led to the ground's collapse over an extensive natural gas pocket, creating a 70-meter-wide crater. 
To prevent hazardous gas discharge, the crater was set aflame, expecting the fire to burn out quickly. Instead, it has been alight for over five decades, becoming a significant visual spectacle and a tourist attraction. Despite several attempts to extinguish it, notably under President Gurbanguly Berdimukhamedov, the fire persists, raising concerns about environmental impact due to continuous methane emissions and the waste of valuable natural resources. Vegetable Lamb of Tartary The Vegetable Lamb of Tartary, or Baromets, is a mythical zoophyte from Central Asia, once believed to produce sheep as its fruits. According to legend, these sheep were attached to the plant by an umbilical cord and could graze around it until they or the plant died when the foliage was consumed. This lore possibly arose from the cotton plant, whose fibers were mistaken for wool by the medieval imagination. Figures like Engelbert Kempfer and Girolamo Cardano investigated but debunked the myth by observing similar natural phenomena or criticizing the biological plausibility of such a creature. Nonetheless, the vegetable lamb persisted in popular thought and scientific debate, symbolizing a marvel that straddled the line between plant and animal kingdoms. Weather Station Kurt Weather Station Kurt, officially known as Wetter Funkgerät Land 26, was a secret automated weather station installed by a German U-boat crew in Labrador, Canada during World War II, specifically on October 22, 1943. The mission was part of Nazi Germany's efforts to obtain precise meteorological data crucial for their military operations in the North Atlantic. The station was equipped with advanced technology for the time, capable of measuring temperature, wind speed, humidity, and atmospheric pressure, autonomously transmitting this data every three hours. Despite the strategic intent, the station operated for a short period, reportedly two months, before ceasing transmission. Its existence remained unknown until its accidental rediscovery in 1977 by geomorphologist Peter Johnson. The remains of this unique wartime artifact were later preserved and are now displayed at the Canadian War Museum in Ottawa. Why do things keep evolving into crabs? Carcinization is the evolutionary phenomenon where non-crab crustaceans independently evolve a crab-like body form a process noted across various species within the crustacean group. This has occurred several times throughout evolutionary history, suggesting a strong selective advantage to the crab-like shape, which is characterized by a flatter, rounder body with a tucked-in tail. This shape may offer benefits such as enhanced mobility, efficient burrowing, and a reduced profile that makes them less vulnerable to predators. The process, first described by L.A. Borodale in 1916, is a classic example of convergent evolution, where unrelated species evolve similar traits due to similar environmental pressures. Interestingly, this process can be reversed in what is known as decarcinization, where crab-like crustaceans evolve back to a more elongated form, highlighting the dynamic nature of evolutionary change. WKCR hijacking The WKCR hijacking, often referred to as the death tape incident, took place in 1995 when an unauthorized broadcast interrupted WKCR-FM, a radio station owned by Columbia University in New York City. The interruption featured a series of unnerving sounds followed by a woman's voice reciting what appeared to be obituaries, including names of individuals such as Frank Oppenheimer and victims of the Pan Am Flight 103 bombing. The recording resurfaced and gained attention online after being posted on 4chan in 2013, nearly two decades after the incident. Despite its eerie content and the mystery surrounding its origins, this incident remains an unexplained anomaly in broadcasting history. Witch Elm Bella In 1943, the remains of an unidentified woman, referred to as Bella, were found inside a witch elm tree in Hagley Wood, Worcestershire, sparking enduring mystery and speculation. Discovered by four boys, the case became widely known due to graffiti asking, who put Bella in the witch elm? Forensic investigations indicated she had been dead for about 18 months, with a piece of taffeta in her mouth suggesting asphyxiation as the cause of death. Despite various theories including espionage, linking her to German spies, possible ritual murder, and other criminal scenarios, her identity and the circumstances of her death remain unsolved. Efforts over the years have included a facial reconstruction in 2017, but the enigma of Bella and how she ended up in the tree continues to perplex investigators and the public alike. Jungus Road Jungus Road, also known as the Death Road, due to its perilous nature, is a narrow winding road that stretches approximately 64 kilometers between La Paz and the Jungus region in Bolivia. Notoriously dangerous, the road was originally constructed in the 1930s by Paraguayan prisoners during the Chaco War, and is characterized by its extreme drop-offs, lack of guardrails, 
and a width of just about three meters in some sections. Historically, it was common for vehicles to fall from the road, with estimates suggesting that 200 to 300 people died annually in the 1990s. However, a new, safer road opened in 2006, significantly reducing traffic along the old Yungus Road. Today, the old route is primarily a destination for thrill-seekers, especially mountain bikers, drawn by its notorious reputation and breathtaking descents. Zone of Death The Zone of Death refers to a 50-square-mile area in Yellowstone National Park, located within the Idaho section, where due to a unique loophole in the United States legal system, a person could theoretically commit crimes with impunity. This anomaly arises from the intersection of several legal principles involving the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees a trial by a jury composed of people from the state and federal district where the crime was committed. Because this specific zone is uninhabited and falls within the jurisdiction of a federal district that spans three states, it is impossible to form a jury that satisfies this requirement. Consequently, while the legal loophole is widely recognized, no known crimes have been committed in this area that test this legal gray area.